So 25th of December. Now, because I know, I know his book, his Burhan, I know. Allah said, ask him for his Burhan. I know the Burhan. So from that knowledge of mine, I'm asking, does your Burhan, not that the news of Burhan, your Bible, does it say that Christ was born on the 25th of December? They're puzzled. Actually, they're puzzled because they don't know whether it's written there. They're celebrating it. I said, no, there's no such thing in the Bible. That Chris, there's no such word as Christmas Day, and there's no such thing as the 25th of December. Where did you get it? I said, you see, Jesus Christ was not born on the 25th of December. I said, when is your birthday? When was, what is your birthday? So the person tells me, he said, no, it's the 30th of June. So I says, now let's say we commemorate your birthday on the 1st of January. And it's easier to remember for everybody, 1st of January. Would you be happy? He says, no. I said, if everybody agrees, he said, no, he's not happy. He is yeah. 30th of June. He wants his birthday to be commemorated. So I said, now Jesus Christ, was he born on the 25th of December? I said, the Quran and the Bible says to the contrary. I said, what? I said, your Bible as well as the Quran are telling me something to the contrary of this. An opportunity, nice an opportunity for me to deliver my message. Any excuse to me, I said, fine, any excuse, deliver the message. Now I find this is the hikmah. Allah says, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati. See, invite all to the ways of the Lord with wisdom. Wal mawizat al hasanat and with beautiful preaching. Wa jadilhum billati ahsan and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Mm -hmm. So, this is what I find. So I'm asking them. 25th, that's the Quran and the Bible, they both agreed that Jesus Christ was not born on the 25th of December. So what is, what is the evidence? So the evidence is, I said, you see when Jesus was born, according to the Gospel of St. Luke, mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 8, mm -hmm. it tells us that at night the angels came and they found shepherds out in the field and the shepherds were told that the child is born to a woman in Bethlehem. Good news about the birth of Jesus Christ. The shepherds were out in the field. And 25th of December is midwinter in Palestine. No Jew will be so foolhardy, mm -hmm. should be so foolish to be out in the open air in the field with his flock. He will freeze to death and his flock will freeze to death. So it must have been a warm evening for people to be out in the field, not midwinter, yeah. the coldest day of the year, not that. Then the Holy Quran also suggests the same. In Surah Maryam, ayah number 25, it tells us that when the child was being born, a voice was heard, an angel of the Lord, telling her, he says, look, the date palm, you are under the date palm, he says, shake the palm leaf and it will let fall fresh ripe date. So fresh ripe date, I think the Arabs, you don't have to prove to the Arabs, you know, that you need midsummer to produce ripe dates. For to be so ripe as if you shake it and it let fall the dates. So it was midsummer, says the Quran, and the Bible suggests also midsummer. But you are celebrating midwinter. Where did you get this? <laughs> So, in other words, now, this is, to me, is a most uh, natural way, beautiful way of proving your point from his own book and from yours. I so said, I'm supporting you, but now you people have just gone off the track and you're celebrating the 25th of December, which is not the birth of Jesus Christ. Sheikh Ahmad Didat, from your factual experience in propagation in English language and from your friction with non-Muslims. What are the methods and means of non-Muslims in propagating their faith among Muslims? At the beginning, the method was to attack, to say Muhammad was a false prophet. He had so many wives. He spread his religion at the point of the sword. Thinking by it and the Quran was a fabrication. All this type of things, thinking that by that they'll be able to get converts but they could not gather much honey with that. So then the Orientalists came along with their new technology, and their method was to say, to praise the Prophet, that he was a sincere man. 
Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They won't say they won't say sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but say Muhammad was a sincere man, but a false prophet. Now it's a harder to deal with. He was a sincere. He was a uh, sincere man, but a false prophet. That's the Orientalist. Mm -hmm. They would say that we find no deliberate deception on his part. Meaning that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't deliberately deceive the people, but poor man was ignorant. He inadvertently he deceived the people. We sympathize with him. Now that was the Orientalists, but now the missionaries they are constant, constantly in the field, and they learn new new techniques. Hmm. One of them is they would visit the Muslim in these countries where we are in a minority. This happening. They visit the Muslim home, and the Muslim. You know, although we don't know the expression "ahlan wa sahlan," in our mentality we are the same, like the Arabs. Most Islam has done it to us. Anybody comes, welcome, without even saying it. Tea and coffee getting ready. It's an unwritten law among us Muslims of of, of India or Pakistani extraction. It is unwritten law. Welcome. Even if the man has come to kill the husband, the wife is going to get tea ready for him. This is our behavior, like the Arabs say "ahlan wa sahlan," say. So we settle these questions, welcome them, sit down, and they start. This is Brother Runim, Brother Salam. Do you believe in Jesus? Sure. He says he knows the answers. He knows the answers. Actually, he's setting you up. See, there's a new method now. You believe in Jesus? Mm -hmm. The man says, Yes, I believe in Jesus. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. Right. He says, "You know, my Jesus is one of the mightiest messengers of God. Do you accept that?" The Muslim says, "No, no, we accept that." He knows the answers, but he's setting you up. He says, "You know, my Jesus." He says, "Now he says, my Jesus was born miraculously, yeah. without any male intervention. Do you believe that?" The Muslim says, "Yes, we believe." Now, was your Muhammad born like that? Muslim says no. He had a father and a mother. He said yes, like you and me. The Muslim says yes. He's proved a point without telling you that Jesus is one degree above Muhammad. Mm. He's not telling you that, but he proved it to you. Mm. He says, you know, my Jesus is Masih, Messiah, translated Christ. It's Masihullah, Allah's Messiah. Do you accept that? The Muslim has got to agree. He says no, no, we believe he's Masihullah, Allah's Messiah. Was your Muhammad Masihullah? The Muslim says, no, he was Rasulullah. But you see, my Jesus is Masih and Rasul in your Quran. He said, Masih is Ibn Maryam. Rasul and Ilab and Israel. He is Rasul and Masih. Your Prophet is only a Rasul in your Quran. The Muslim says, yes, that is so. He's proved again that Jesus is one degree above Muhammad, another degree above Muhammad. He says, you know, my Jesus gave life back to the dead. He says, yes, yes, based on Allah. He said, okay, based on Allah. Did your Prophet Muhammad give life back to the dead based on Allah? He says, I don't know. Maybe some hadith is somewhere. I don't know. See, so he says, Jesus is another degree above Muhammad. He says, now where is your Prophet Muhammad? You say he is buried in Medina. Perhaps his bones have rotted in the grave. The Muslim says, no, we believe he is Hayatul Nabi. He is the living Prophet. He said that is metaphysically, man. But physically, maybe his bones have rotted in the grave. So he says, maybe. Where is my Jesus? He said he's in heaven. He's alive. You he said he's alive. He's coming back. He said he's coming back. Proving again that Jesus is another degree above Muhammad. He said, now don't you think God had a purpose in doing all that? He does things.